It's time for Charting Futures, where we dive into the futures markets through the charts. And today we are taking a look at bonds. After all, the 10-year yield has quietly climbed higher over the last several trading days, up for a fifth day in a row at this time, and the longest daily upstreak of the year. Now, that backup in yields may be happening without a lot of fanfare until at least today. But the move has been sizable, with the 10-year yield moving up from a low of about 2.75% on April 11th to a hair shy of 3% earlier today. And on the year at this point, the 10-year yield is up more than half a percent on pace for its biggest yearly move up, back up since 2013, and the whole taper tantrum. This comes on expectations of the Fed hiking rates in 2018, and it may just create a repricing of risk that could ripple across asset classes. Now, the degree of the move may determine the degree of a potential ripple. So let's take a look at a chart of the 10-year yield here in the Bloomberg. It's a long-term chart, and you can access it using the GTV function in the Bloomberg. And this represents the great bond bull market in bonds, this downtrend, because, of course, price trades inverse to yield. So long as this channel remains in place, it tells us that the bull market is in place. Some technicians over the last few months have said that if the 10-year yield climbs above, let's call it three and one quarter of one percent, that would signify a potential end of the bull market. But so long as we have the 10-year yield in that range, the bull market for bonds is on. And now to weigh in on all this, I would like to bring in Michael Rorick of Jones Trading. And Mike, you you have really been dead on with bonds this year, being bearish on bonds. What's your view now? I think I think it's still a bear story here. I mean, I think that chart you know, tells a story that the bull market's probably over in bonds, and we're due for an environment where, where rates are going to rise and yields are going to be higher, and we're going to push to that 3% level. And so a piece of this, of course, is the Fed. So let's pull up the warp function in the Bloomberg, and if you could take us through this great uh, function in the Bloomberg. Yeah, th this thing is great. Traders love it. Um, what you can see here is there's a list of the FOMC meetings, right? And the probability of, well, we're looking at rate hikes here, right? So the next meeting there's a 32 percent probability of a rate hike at the june meeting there's a 91 almost 92 percent chance of a rate hike and this chart uh, along the bottom shows that see how it's steadily increasing that expectations for more rate cuts are obviously uh on the schedule here and what becomes interesting is we're less than two months from that meeting now and as we know we're going to have another 25 basis point rate hike we talk about that 10 2 spreads down to about 50 basis points and there's real concern about that yield curve inverting if this 10-year yield doesn't start rising so the the hope for here is that that 10-year bond continues to sell off pushing yields above three percent well let's take a look at a chart that you made for us around that potential inversion and we can see this one too using the gtv oh. function great chart Mike. Thanks for making it. Yeah, this, this I, I like this chart because it goes back to pre-crisis mm. and yield curve inversions or what everyone worries about. It's when the short the short term interest rates, which in this case are the two years, which is the blue line, r increases and, and rises above the white line, which is the 10 year. So if you could see this, the spread between the two is down at the bottom here. Now, this is a very robust environment for investing in the financial markets when that spreads nice and wide. Down here, when it's inverted, as it was going into the end of 2007, before the rest recession started and the bear market and the global financial crisis started, that's a problem. So we want to avoid, avoid that. And you see that starting to form down at the end there. We're not down to zero yet. We're not inverted yet. But that spread is tightening. And that's something that everybody's concerned about when you see at the end of the chart that spread getting tighter and we're worried about the two year moving above the 10 year. So everyone wants to see that 10 year sell off a little more here. So how are you trading this? Are you still recommending to sell? Yeah, so what you can see the is the, yeah, the 10 year future is the, is the one I'd recommend to sell. Because what is interesting is we're pushing up against that 3% mark uh, right now. That's where we got the end of the taper tantrum back in, at the end of 2013 and early 2014. So that is an environment when the Fed was still buying treasuries, right? right? Now we're, we're, they're doing the reverse. They're letting treasuries run off their balance sheet. So there's still a lot of room for this 10-year yield to pop up and move higher. And is there a point, though, where you would perhaps be less bearish on bonds quickly? I think if, when it gets, I think it's going to test three and a quarter and then three and a half percent in there. I think you're going to look for some st stabilization and then the market's going to normalize a little and you have to take another look. Gotcha. Great analysis on bonds and yields for charting futures. Michael Rourke of Jones Trading, thanks so much for joining us.